14 years old. And there I fell in love with the physical medium of music. I still remember at the time being Dad's jockey because he's a truck driver and giving me pocket money, you know, helping him out. Now at the time, you know, some I used to buy stuff like chocolates, lollies, fast food and any, energy drinks, but I still remember the day I found in love with collecting, at the time, CDs because cassettes were before my time and obviously vinyl was too back then, so I was hooked on CDs. Now, I still remember, like, I had things like, at the time, the most up-to-date collection of Disturbed, with their last album at that time being indestructible. I had, I think, three or four Cradle of Filth CDs. I had this Guns N' Roses Greatest Hits album that Dad bought me for Christmas on my birthday, or one of the two. Which helped me introduce a love of Guns N' Roses to me. And I remember <laughs> to this day I get pissed off because the song Night Train is not even on the Greatest Hits album, which I think is one of their top three easy greatest songs. And I think it's because of that album I'm now a full album kind of guy instead of just the Greatest Hits because I don't trust Greatest Hits, you know? Besides the point. I remember when I was buying my first Cradle of Phil CD, we, me and Dad were having lunch break. And... I walked into this, like, heavy metal, black metal-themed CD shop. Now, the guy, you could imagine, dressed all gothic, you know, piercings, hats, mohawk, you know, kind of like a, an extreme version of the punk era. And it was really nice. He's like, how can I help you? And I said, I'm looking to get a Cradle of Filth CD. And he looked at me with the most concerned look I've ever seen, like, you know, even though he was a shop shop worker owner, one of the two, he didn't want to, like, mentally ruin me because of how heavy these albums were. So he tested me. He said, name me a metal band. I failed the test instantly. I said Metallica. <laughs> I mean, you couldn't think of a more generic answer to that question if I tried. <laughs> he shook his head and he's like, all right, kid. Lucy, <laughs> you really want this, and I did really want it. I was just just getting into Creative Filth, so I wanted one of their albums. And he said, "Look, he's like, in my opinion, this is the softest record up to date, which didn't say much for Creative. If you don't like this, don't even bother exploring anything heavier." So he gave me the album Nymphetamine, which is a play on words on uh, the drugs and amphetamines. And I was hooked, you know. I knew I would be, I just needed a little push, and that album started off my love and desire for heavier genres of music. Now, the reason I bring this up is, I don't think we understand just how important physical uh, media actually is. I mean, streaming is great. I've got streaming. Do uh, YouTube music. I pay for a family plan so that, you know, a few people that I hold dear can enjoy with me. Now, it's great, you know, you've got unlimited music literally at your fingertips. You can switch at any moment's notice. Search whoever you want, whatever album you want, new releases, you got it. But, at what point does the value of the music actually go down? Because I remember, I don't know who said it, but I was reading this article that said if Led Zeppelin, The Beatles, Queen, Van Halen, Michael Jackson, Prince, Alan John, you know, the greatest of great, if they were introduced in the streaming era, they would never have been as big as they became. And it's an, it's an interesting point to think about because streams don't really mean that much, you know, Michael Jackson Thriller has sold what was like 750 million copies and climbing. I'm not sure if that counts for a CD and vinyl, or just CD, I'm not too sure. Either way, 750 million units sold. Sold. So that means somebody went to the CD store, vinyl store, whatever it is, and purchased a, a copy of Thriller. 
<laughs> streaming, all you have to do is click, and sometimes it doesn't even include if you listen to the full stream. That's why so many artists today are focusing on streams, so they so they overjack the music for stream value instead of actually making an album worth paying money for. I think it really is a big concern because when I used to collect CD, oh, I had a stereo player. I would just put it in my CD slot, and yeah, I would spend the time listening to the album because that's what's in it. I can skip to a new artist. Obviously, if you have CD collections, you can just take it out and put a new artist in, but that was still a hassle, you know? You didn't care. If you put it in, you're going to listen to the whole album, skip tracks, whatever. But it's going to be that album that you listen to. And I think that, you know, that love, that sense of pride of owning a physical copy is something that's truly, you know, vanished that, that love, you know, that connection to the artist. Like I said, don't get me wrong, I use streaming daily. I'm using it after I record this. <laughs> I use it every day. I use it multiple times a day. I use it when I'm in the shower. I use it when I'm walking my dog. I use it on my days off just when I'm doing stuff. I listen to music constantly via stream, even though I collect vinyls. It's easier, obviously, and obviously more accessible. But at what cost? You know, we are kind of tarnishing our legends by giving them really a lower standard. I mean, that's not to say that the greats wouldn't have done the same thing if offered. Like, if it was all about streams. Who knows, maybe they would all just turn generic and make three song albums instead of the classics we know today and love. But, I think it's just something to look, you know, something, something to consider. Do you still hold that love and passion for your albums via streaming? Can you still have the same pride with looking at a phone and opening an app than you do owning a physical copy. I'm not sure. You know, obviously I'm not the say all end all and my opinions are just mine, but it's really something to think about. And I still collect vinyl to this day, you know? And every time I purchase a new one, it makes me happy knowing that I have it in my collection. Even though I've obviously got it in my music library, but just, you know, like I said, the feeling of owning a physical copy from Soul. And that's my two cents for the day. Make sure you all remember to keep it relentless.